I recently introduced uh, Pluralax Security as an investment idea on this YouTube channel, and I made up some follow-up videos. I interviewed the CEO of the company, and today I'm going to interview the executive chairman, Ali uh, Hakim Sadeh. So, Ali, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Mariusz. Nice to be here. Yeah, um, you became a chairman. You came on board Pluralock. Uh, so tell us, tell us about you. Tell us about how you learned about the company. And you know, everybody wants to learn what the plan is. Sure. Uh, yeah. I uh, so uh, by way of background, uh, I have been uh, an investment banker um, and a uh, uh, merchant banking boutique operation, as well as capital market advisory for uh, well over twenty five years. Um, and essentially, I try to find uh, uh, good management teams and good projects uh, to work uh, uh, with. And uh, uh, most recently, uh, I was involved as the executive chairman uh, with a company called HS uh, GovTech, uh, which we uh, successfully sold to a uh, private equity firm based out of San Francisco in November of 2023. Uh, that particular situation, uh, we, um, we uh, sold it for an all cash deal at about 150% premium to market. And, um, you know, it was um, that and just uh, observing the markets uh, that it was, became fairly clear to me that there are a number of uh, 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 public companies uh, in the Canadian capital markets that are uh, quite undervalued from a fundamentals basis um, and that uh, perhaps there were other opportunities that I could get involved with, uh, work with uh, the, the existing board management um, and see if we could uh, uh, have a uh, outsized return uh, on our investment. So it didn't take too long actually and I was introduced to Plurlock um, uh, approximately uh, five weeks after uh, we closed our transaction on HS and it took me uh, a number of months to uh, get to know management and understand the business and uh, came to the conclusion that this was in fact a great opportunity uh, undervalued um, uh, and uh, really ripe for investment and, uh, uh, and so on. So uh, it took me about three, four months to uh, do, do the work that I did, do diligence and so on. Uh, the reason that, that I liked it um, uh, was the following, you know, uh, uh, as with uh, the HF situation, uh, Plurlock has uh, some tremendous clients uh, they are government clients, both um, uh, federal in Canada as well as the United States, majority in the United States. Uh, you know, departments of uh, Treasury, Department of uh, Defense, uh, uh, to name a few, um, and also a number of uh, global 2000 clients. Um, so all very, um, uh, you know, mature uh, and, you know, always, you know, uh, paying uh, clients. Um, so that was a, a, a good fundamental basis uh, to work off of. The margins of the business, uh, for the most part, were uh, rather thin. Uh, but again, the opportunity to cross-sell uh, what we now call critical services, which are uh, significantly higher margins, I uh, was well underway when I joined, and uh, uh, that also uh, is an opportunity that I saw to focus on and to grow, uh, and that's exactly what the company is doing. The critical services portion of our business is the fastest growing uh, portion of the business today, and um, uh, we expect our blended margins. Uh, to continue to grow. You know, we saw in Q1, as an example, that our gross margins uh, were uh, about uh, 20%. And uh, that was a significant improvement from the prior year, same period, which was about 13%. Not to say that we expect um, uh, those numbers uh, uh, to, um, you know, uh, stay up there on a quarter by quarter basis, but certainly the trend is towards uh, improving those margins uh, towards um, uh, higher double digit uh, figures. So that's exciting. Um, the um, uh, reorganization of the company uh, allowed us to, uh, uh, you know, get some uh, of the debt off the books. Uh, we're in, uh, currently underway on the convertible debentures as well as some shares for debt, uh, clean up the balance sheet, we rolled the stock back 10 for one. We put about five and a half million dollars in a, a well oversubscribed financing, 
um, into the company, and that really gave us the fuel uh, to push forward to execute on some of the initiatives uh, that we wish to do. The other part of the company that I really uh, was quite impressed with is that the company had uh, uh, very successfully completed four acquisitions uh, in prior years uh, and had uh, successfully integrated them uh, and managed to um, get some synergies uh, from a cost perspective from, from the whole thing. Um, so, um, you know, that and the, the, the management's ability to be able to uh, execute on that also is an attractive uh, uh, part of uh, the company's management and, uh, uh, and so on. So, um, you know, uh, the, the um, market in general uh, for cybersecurity uh, is a big market uh, and a growing market. We see in the news almost on a daily basis some sort of a cyber event, cyber attack event. Uh, and, and so that really uh, puts it up uh, in terms of uh, one of the fastest growing and uh, most in demand uh, segments to be in. Not a whole lot of uh, small companies exist that are growing in that sector. So, you know, the um, investment community, the retail community has opportunity uh, to invest in uh, Pluralock and uh, uh, basically be part of that growth. So these are all the different factors that um, uh, came together and, uh, you know, I made a decision to jump in, join and uh, help push uh, Pluralock forward. You mentioned that, um you know, retail investors don't really have access to those kinds of opportunities uh, in the, you know, cybersecurity space. And I think that retail that might know about Plural, like I think they might take this opportunity for granted. But can you elaborate more on why, why retail doesn't have access to those kinds of opportunities? Well, typically companies that operate in this space are much larger um, and, and they're, you know, they're listed on uh, the big board. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, the, and they're typically um, uh, at the earlier stages um, are funded by the, uh, by the venture capital firms uh, or by the institutions. And so uh, very limited access uh, for the average retail investor uh, uh, exists. So, you know, they can certainly go ahead and buy some of these companies in the market, uh, but uh, uh, they don't have that early uh, evaluation access. And currently, I believe that where Plurlock sits, um, uh, that's really an entry level uh, type of valuation that uh, provides the opportunity for uh, investors to get involved. I mean, when you have a company that has billions of dollars of revenues versus a company like Pluralock that last year had 70 million of revenues, it's a lot easier to grow $70 million revenues at a faster rate than it is to grow billion dollar revenues. That's exactly right. That's right. Exactly. And also, also what I find personally interested about it is that uh, usually, usually when you have companies that grow fast or have uh, a, a lot of growth ahead, those opportunities are expensive. And with Pluralak, you have the opportunity to have a growth growth that's fast, yet get it at a very cheap price. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's very accurate. You know, uh, the uh, uh, to my knowledge, the, the, the typical company uh, that does what we do um, uh, with the sort of numbers that we have and, uh, and so on are trading somewhere in the 0.5 to one times uh, uh, revenue in terms of a multiple. Uh, and we are trading at uh, quite a bit below that right now. So as we continue to execute, as we continue to uh, tell the story, we expect that gap to close. Uh, so we do not expect uh, uh, us to be uh, as undervalued as we are today, uh, in my personal view. As a as a chairman, you were not a chairman before uh, the recapitalization and uh, and the capital raise of five point five million. But as a chairman, when you get involved with companies, it it, it it seems like you roll up your sleeves and you 
you you're not just a passive investor what, what is it that you do how, how do you help companies what's your role yeah look um, uh, i work with uh, the ceo uh, ian patterson and the cfo uh, scott myers very closely uh, we speak on a daily basis uh, we work with uh, the balance of the board uh, to set strategy uh, uh, we uh, i spent uh, quite a bit of my time on interacting with various uh, uh, members and participants in the capital markets. Uh, we are telling the story uh, uh, widely uh, at this point in time, speaking to uh, you know, uh, uh, retail brokers, investment advisors, uh, institutions, uh, brokerage houses, and, uh, and so on. And uh, we do so across uh, uh, Canada and the US. Uh, so that, that, uh, that telling the story and making sure that we're on the radar screens of um, uh, some of these uh, uh, investors, advisors, and uh, market participants is an important part of the job that uh, uh, takes up a lot of time. And I would rather for Ian to spend uh, more time, obviously, on um, uh, the sales and operations side. Um, and and uh, so that, you know, I essentially am uh, partnering up with them to uh, take some of the load off of their shoulders uh, where I can. Uh, but suffice it to say that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a full-time job. When you talk to various parties, uh, other investors, uh, hedge funds or institutions, can you share some of the feedback that you might be getting from them on what they think, how they see Pluralock? Yeah, I mean, the, generally the, the feedback's been quite positive. And, um, uh, you know, they, uh, they take the company uh, seriously. Uh, they definitely put it on their watch list. Uh, we've had multiple conversations uh, uh, with uh, single groups um, over and over again uh, uh, to continue to uh, you know, provide them with information, get them more uh, involved and engaged. Uh, you know, uh, so there's, as I said before, uh, m a is a big, has historically been a big part of uh, the company. Um, and uh, to us, um, there are um, uh, opportunities that may present themselves that we want to take advantage of, and so we want to make sure that we've got uh, the uh, skill sets around the table and within the advisory group that we can execute uh, should such opportunities arise. Uh, so there's a, there's there's a lot of work out there. You know, we want to grow the company to much larger uh, revenue numbers, and uh, that's going to happen from an organic standpoint. Um, and perhaps it could happen uh, uh, with a strategic uh, opportunity uh, as it uh, sort of lands uh, in front of us. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the feedback from the community has been quite strong and quite supportive. Most of your revenues come from the U.S., but you are uh, trading in Canada. Uh, do you see what? What do you see down the road in the future? Do you do you see maybe Pluralock moving on the U.S. exchange, or do you see it staying where it is and maybe getting bought out? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, eighty-five percent uh, plus uh, of our uh, revenue base comes out of the United States. Uh, the majority of which is with uh, federal government, and uh, we see that trend uh, uh, continuing. Uh, the opportunities, of course, are also international. Um, and as with any uh, company that's growing, um, the opportunity to uplist uh, exists and should be looked at. And uh, that's not uh, any different uh, for us. So we uh, certainly are evaluating those options. The question is uh, when, and uh, certainly I can't guide that right now, uh, but it's something that we uh, look at and uh, moving to um, and more senior uh, uh, exchanges in the United States is a definite possibility down the road. Let's talk a little bit about the, the board of directors. You're, you're the chairman. Uh, oh. Can you comment anything on the types of people that are on, on the board of directors? Yeah, look, I mean, that's another piece of, uh, of the company that's, that's quite impressive. Uh, you know, we have uh, industry people uh, in the cybersecurity space, uh, individuals that have uh, you know, been uh, X Raytheon uh, uh, at uh, Hammerslaw, uh, Jen uh, uh, Swindell, who's with Booz Allen, 
Um, and um, uh, we have advisors uh, that uh, are also from uh, some of these uh, Fortune 500 type consulting uh, firms. Uh, and uh, it's quite impressive, really, uh, to, to be uh, amongst these uh, high caliber individuals with such a deep knowledge of uh, the cybersecurity world. Uh, so I'm quite impressed, and I expect that we will work more closely uh, with these individuals both on the uh, board of advisors as well as board of directors uh, to bring value to the company and the shareholders. You said that after you found out about Pluralock, you it took you three to four months to do the work required for you to get comfortable and putting to put your own money behind this company. Correct. So if somebody wanted to become a shareholder, and wanted to conduct their due diligence. Like, what kind of things did you do, or what kind of things would you suggest people to do uh, in order to learn and get comfortable with Pluralock? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, look, uh, 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 being a public company, uh, having audited financials, uh, and having all that be available uh, to investors uh, is the first place, right? And I spent quite a bit of time. Uh, looking at those and asking questions of management um, and satisfied myself that, uh, you know, uh, this is a uh, um, highly prospective company with uh, lots of potential. Uh, so, so certainly uh, uh, looking at the publicly available material and doing your own due diligence um, as, a, as a key part of this um, and uh, speaking with uh, management uh, because at the end of the day, you get the feel uh, for who they are and what they stand for and where they want to take the company. Uh, that's all uh, part, of, part of what I did. And certainly, uh, if uh, investors wish to uh, speak with us, uh, we have an open line. All right, perfect. Uh, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to leave my listeners with? Yeah, you know, again, um, I would encourage everyone to do their homework uh, and uh, take a look at this company. I do believe it's a gem. Uh, it's quite undervalued. And, uh, you know, now's the time uh, to get involved if that's uh, what people wish to do. All right. Well, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. Take care of yourself.